This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, we got us a little walk-in cooler here that I was out on a while back. We got a refrigerant leak and took care of some dripping in there and cleaned the pan out that was really, really bad shape. Well, while I was here, I ended up finding a leak in the condensate pan down here. And as you can see, it gets ate up and that 3 8 line down there needs to be replaced. I tried to order it, but we couldn't get it. So we're gonna make a new one today. See right here, this is the piece that's silver looking. Somewhere in here it was leaking. I don't remember, it's been a couple months since I've been here. I'm not sure why they'd run armored cable in the water. It's not real brilliant. Basically worthless and it's just rotting away. You can see all the oil right there. Obviously it's been leaking refrigerant. Looks like this compressor was replaced back in May of 22. Here we are in January of 23. So we've got some real creative stuff going on here. We got a quarter inch line going into the compressor here, coming out to three eighths. We're gonna do this exactly the same way. We're probably gonna have to remake it differently. We're most likely gonna make this a little smaller too because I don't have enough three eighths copper as I originally had. I'm just gotta keep in mind that this fan is going right across here and would block it. So we gotta figure out how we wanna do this. I got lots of room up here. That's great. See right there about what we're dealing with. We've got to come up, connect onto here, and some point get back onto here. This is your discharge going down, and this discharge coming back out of the pan, and then eventually going to the condenser to be liquefied. That's hard as a rock, so that's not going nowhere. Well, I've seen spiral ones, and that might work. I think we're just gonna try to get close. We just don't have enough copper to make a bunch. We've got a 180 bender here that we'll be able to make it with. Originally, I thought this was in quarter inch and I had plenty of that. I did not think it was in three eighths. Usually it's not. We're gonna use what little three eighths I've got here to make as much as we can. We may only make a couple loops back and forth, but that's, that's what we're gonna have to make work. Now we can mark this out, measure it, and do all that happy stuff. Or we can just kind of eyeball it in there, which is generally what I end up doing because there's only so much you can do with it. So your bins are there. NorCal Dave did a real good video on uh, doing bending and stuff. You should probably check that out. So that right there for the quarter and three eighths. We want to line that line there up to it. So we'll pull this back a touch, which is really long. Let's see if that looks about right, just to make sure. It's, I don't do this very often. Obviously it's gonna bend right there. There we go. Back it right there. And this is where you gotta have the 180 uh, bender. I can't remember if it was that line had to be at the end of it where you think it's going to hit the, the bend. I think that might be where it's got to go. Yeah, I think it's where you line it up at, that's zero. 
Let's do the 180. This one's gonna be a little more difficult because we're gonna hit this piece there. So I can already tell you I made a little bit of a mistake, but you can bend it down a little bit. Do your 180. It's still a lot better when it was a uh, quarter inch because a quarter inch is nice and tight, but the three eighths is not. Lengthwise, we're looking pretty good there. We'll make another bend right there. And then we'll just do a little bit of twist when we're done. We're gonna skip one loop and we'll come back and we'll have just enough copper to do our job. And basically going right there where that curve is, where it starts, and kind of copying it at that point. Like I said, this is not available, so we don't have a lot of options here. So we are exactly right there like that, and we're going to make this other bend right here and bring it right up. Now just keep in mind, I do not do this every day, so I do not claim to be the moral authority on this at all. Okay, we're just doing a 90. There we go. And it works out to being the same size right up to there. I'll have a link for this down in the description down below, along with some of the other ones. It's an Imperial tool. Oh, you just can't win on this. Everything lines up, but I'm a little short on some things here. If I can bend this back, the problem is you got brackets down here that are screwing me. If we bend this back a little bit, we might be able to get that to bend down to it. And then butt right up. And then as long as this is down in the water, it'll be fine. burnt the paint up a little bit there we didn't overheat the dryer so it's cosmetic not usually how I do it if you, if you haven't seen in my other videos you can check out some of those don't see no goobers and things like that flame was off it got bumped I didn't I didn't care oxidizing non oxidizing whatever I just needed to get hot and get on and get off you know that everything I did is perfect it's in place uh, got that there we got to do a little bit of bending down here on the copper to make it fit into the pan a little bit better just had to maneuver it as best we could and then finish off shoving it down in there. It's more than enough to evaporate off the water that's gonna be down there in that pan. So I'll go ahead and put a little bit of juice on this thing, see how she is. I wanted to use my Captain Hook to get in there because it makes it so easy to get around things. That way you can get on and get off faster, but 
one bad thing about that is, is you can't get into tight spots a lot of times your wand and everything's hitting, so. I do have um, some wet rag and a few other things I could have put on that. I just didn't think we'd need it, but looking back, I should have. It's got a TXV just because I want to get done and get out of here. I got another call, I got to run, and I'm at least an uh, hour and a half from home, which is about 65 miles. Now, this isn't going to be probably a perfect vacuum because we've got a lot of refrigerant in there. And uh, it wasn't wet to begin with, so I'm not going to spend all day trying to get 500 and hold. First of all, I ain't got time for it. Second of all, it's a waste of time because it's purely refrigerant and the oil boiling off. I've kept this thing. Uh, in a positive hallway when I did the uh, evacuation, I left it for a couple pounds of pressure, getting the uh, repair done under nitrogen, and now we're going to pull a fast back, get her, uh, get her good. Looks like we got pretty much everything in place the way it needs to go. The wire here, I'm going to see if I can maybe pull that off. It's just shielding they should have taken off when they replaced the motor, but they didn't. All right, so we got the wire crap off of there and uh, reconnecting it here. They had all these crammed under one wire nut, so we're just gonna use some Wagos. It'll make it easier for service in the future. That and my European friends over there always kind of complain about our, our wire nuts we use, so we use some Wago Tagos here. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's starting to shoot right up because there's so much freaking refrigerant in there. That's why I'm not gonna waste my time. And it's starting to drop back down. 12, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. That's refrigerant boiling off. Otherwise, it would just keep shooting up if we had a leak, which we've already proved that there's no leaks. Always like capping them off. That way we don't get no crap in the hoses. Which one of them has already got some oil in there from a pretty deep vacuum where it sucks some oil in. Yeah, I should have used it. Let's get the weight scale set up here. Charging, manual, okay. And should get, boom, 427 ounces, zero it. Boom, and let's let her roll. Do I have it on pounds? Nope, I got it on regular ounces. Good, that'll make it nice and easy to read. That's one thing I kind of like about it, just does whichever one you want, Oun pounds or ounces, or grams, whatever. But see, we don't have to calculate and divide and all that crap. You went 38, you're way in 38. And we may have to add just a touch for the filter dryer because that's an 083. And that's a little bigger than normal. So let's go ahead and get the 38 ounces in there right there. Stop. And let's get our cages uh, switched back out. There we go. You don't want to take this off in advance because you'll suck stuff in, air in. So I usually like to bleed that before I put the five quart piece in there and then shove her in. Yeah, if you got a micron gauge that can't take pressurization, 
chances are it can't take much of any other abuse and use. And the AccuTrack uh, VAC, uh, Blue Vac Pro there, it doesn't care. It's truly professional, not, oh, I can get for a pound. Oh, damage. Ouch. And then you constantly banging your head into that thing. There we go. I hear it running. That was supposed to look like metal. Silver on top, but copper on the sides. And you can see where some of that MC cable was hitting. We're flashing off on the side glass, but we gotta give her a little bit. Let her, let her stabilize here. Like I said, that filter dryer, that, that kind of bothers me a little bit because I'll get judged on that, I'm sure. But like I said, check out my other braze jobs and stuff. So I melted the uh, paint a little bit. Didn't hurt the dryer on the inside. It's not gonna rust inside the building. I know it don't look good. I got gray paint out there, might give it a shot. But what we did is we gotta finish wiring it into place. Um, the cover right there goes over top of it. Like I said, we're still kind of flashing there on the side glass. I believe we've got a problem with the evaporator motors. So I shut it down to get the cage back on over there. Let's uh, get this thing popped up. I've already replaced one motor back on March of last year. The other ones are, they just, they don't seem like they're moving at the same speed. Let's uh, kick it on and see what happens. So we did add a little bit of refrigerant to it. We got the side glass full there. Four ounces, put me back to clear, added a couple of extra ounces. Got to grab a wire tire too, get this kind of cleaned up and then we'll wrap it up. Got that all wired tonight up. It's all locked in together there, so nothing's gonna come apart. Nothing's rubbing anything or anything. Like a little frost in there, it's really hot to hook up here with all the heat and stuff. I checked the secret heat last time and it was fine. I didn't have no problems with it at all. Got down to 34 degrees. Uh, like I said, fans, two of them are running at some different speeds, so fans are both equally the same speed and they're the same brand. And the one I put on there doesn't require the capacitor. We should be good. It's been running like that for a long time. If you guys enjoyed this video, check out the playlist with refrigeration. If you're looking for heating or cooling, check out the playlist for that. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.